Hello everyone and welcome back to Just Finish Coding. This is part 4 of our Sudoku series on Scratch 3. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Just finished coding. Now I'm going to start this off by interjecting that if you've not watched parts 1 to 3, please watch them before you come here because as you can see, I'm picking up from where I left off. And for this video to make sense, you need to have watched the previous ones. I'll leave a card for you right here. Please watch the videos and then come right back. If you're still here, then you probably have quite a bit of your game set up. And as of now, I'm going to import the sprite which says, um, which says initial square positions. And you can find it within the sprites folder in the, uh, in the downloadable link in the description. And um, the particular sprite is called initial board numbers. So once, once you import that, you should have it like this. And there are quite a few similarities. Um, actually, not, uh, never mind. So the only two similarities are the fact that um, when we receive in it, we will um, show ourselves. I, I mean, we will hide ourselves. And also when we receive um, Dell clones, we will delete ourselves. I got a bit confused with the, um, with the pen numbers and the pencil numbers, but anyway, I will do the pencil numbers probably in the next video. So when we receive delete um, Dell clones, then we will delete all these clones. And also when we receive in it, like I said, we will hide ourselves. And um, here you can go back to the controller sprite and put these two functions into your init method. So you can go here and um, grab these two functions. So set board first, and then you can put in the set answer. So what this is going to do is to set up our board and our um, answer list. So what you can do is head over to variables and then click on board and, uh, to show it. And uh, when you look at this, you can see that we have certain elements filled up and most of them empty. And we just want to make sure that the certain ones that are filled up are um, showing on the board. And that's what this whole initial board numbers is for. So what you can do is uh, a grab or when I receive um, create number clones and this is where we're going to create the clones. Okay. Um, what we can do is set up a new variable and this time I'm going to call it numbers counter. So set it to be numbers counter and um, we can set this to be one initially. So set numbers counter to one and we can hide this to make sure that it's not really showing it uh, showing to the user. Set numbers counter to one. And this time we'll just need a repeat 81 times. So repeat 81 and we loop through the entire board to um, switch costumes based on the based on the item number. So repeat 81 and I didn't mean to do that. That was accidental. So uh, each of those times we will be checking if something is the case. And um, before I forget to add it, I will change numbers counter by one. So add in a change numbers counter by one. And here we can use the not um, the not operator. And this is going to reverse the condition of whatever we put inside of this. And what we're going to put inside is checking if it is equal to space. And what will be uh, what we're checking is going to be item, um, not of answer, but of board, uh, item numbers counter of board. Okay. And uh, please make sure you add in a space here and not just, you know, leave it blank because I've set it so that each of those empty items are spaces and not blank. And um, if you have this in place, then what is going to do is make sure that, well, it's not any of these things. And if it's not a space, only then is it going to execute this code. And that's what we need to do since we're checking if there's a number in there. And instead of seeing if item is equal to one, if it's equal to two and so on, we can just use the not to make it way simpler. And now I'm going to make a new variable and this is going to be called next. And it's going to be similar to um, the variable we used in our pen numbers to basically wait until our clone was shown and only then did we create the next clone. So that's uh, what we'll be doing now. So now I'll be grabbing a when I, um, when I start as a clone because we will be creating new clones inside of this. So when I start as a clone, um, what I will do is I'll set next to no in the end. So set next to no. Um, set next to uh, next to I mean um, not no I meant yes set next to yes and that means I will set next to no right here so set next to no and uh, I will create a clone of myself and I'll do a couple of things before that but just add this for now so create clone of myself and wait until next is equal to yes so wait until um, next is equal to yes uh, so grab an equal to from operators and just say yes inside this 
um, just hold on while I catch up with where I was and there are quite a few variables right here and it's pretty useful if you use you know uppercase and lowercase I should have probably told you this earlier but um, anyway so wait until next is yes and here we need to go to the particular position just like the way we did for our pen numbers and um, what we can do is broadcast the exact same message um, or not the exact same message we can broadcast a different message um, but we can use pretty much the exact same code and here I'll be broadcasting this message called get init pause. So get init pause, click OK and now you can head over to the square and um, you can put this entire thing within a function and uh, I'll be making a new block called get coordinates, get coordinates and um, you can run without screen refresh actually um, and once you put this in here you can edit this block and add in an input and say number. So whatever number we enter in, we get the position of that particular clone number. So here in this case, um, that number is going to be current clone and you can just put the number right here, just the way I did it. So what you can do now is you can say when I receive get init pause, get init pause, then we can instead of getting the coordinates of um, getting the coordinates of current clone, we can get the coordinates of whatever we want. In this case, it's going to be the numbers counter. So get coordinates of numbers counter and that's going to return the coordinates that we need in the form of X position and Y position. So now you can click on the board and you can just say um, after we get the position, we're creating a clone. Uh, we can go to X pause comma Y pause. So go to X, X pause and Y, Y pause. So you can add those two uh, variables in there. And that'll make sure that we go to the correct position. And uh, I'll be showing the clones just um, so that the user, I mean, in this case, the player can see it. And uh, you can see that we set next to yes only after we show our clones. And I think that is going to be it. But I will check my initial code once to make sure that I'm not missing anything. So as it turned out, I'd missed one line of code and that was changing the costume. And all you have to do is just say switch costume to and now you can head over to variables and grab this block which says item one off and you can change that to be item numbers counter of answer and uh, that is going to be all you need to do uh, not answer I'm sorry of board and once you have this in place and then you click the green flag uh, okay you can see that all of these things for some reason jam up right on the first um, on the first um, uh, first square and I'm not entirely sure what went wrong so I do have to go through my code once more and then I will be right back. So I just did the debugging and I found the error and that was actually in the square and I didn't expect to do this but I created the square clones when I uh, received create number clones and I instead had to do it when I received square clones and as a result what was happening was before my square was even created we were creating our numbers which just meant that the clone number at the point of you know detecting it didn't even exist. So it just turned out to by default take it to be one and that was the reason everything was going wrong. So if you add this, um, if you change this to be create square clones and then you click the green flag, you can see that the squares create first and then the numbers show up perfectly. And that is all you need to do. And I'm gonna end this video right here. It was a fairly short video, but we did manage to set up our initial board positions. And in the next video, I think we'll do our pencil numbers and we'll also be changing up these, you know, markings and pencil sides and a little bit more with respect to the board itself. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.